welcome to another episode of uh, uh, Value First Expert Interviews. And today I'm very happy to have Paul Nowak. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah, almost correct. How do you say it? Pavel Novak. Yeah. And he was just telling me it's actually uh, Paul Newman. Yeah. <laughs> so, Paul Newman or Pavel. Um, uh, uh, he he has taken a keen interest in the you know in the value first methods yes and uh, done uh, several things with it and uh, you've been hosting uh, you know workshops with Tom in in Poland where yes. where you're mm -hmm. from and um, uh, yeah as I understand you you're quite interested in these methods but yes, yes. before mm -hmm. we go there mm -hmm. uh, uh, take me back to when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Like ten years old, all right. Something like this. Where where were you living? Um, in Gliwice. Uh, yeah. It's a south southern far, part of Poland. Um, in Silesia region. Silesia region is the probably one of the most industrialized regions in Europe. So. And were you living in the middle of industry or? Um, yeah, the 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 whole ag agglomeration is. Uh, uh, full of factories and coal mines and, and stuff like this. Did you have parents working? No, no, my parents are architects. They're architects. All right. And um, uh, with your parents as architects, did, that have, did you see them being architects? Or were they just at work? Or were they doing something at home? Or yeah, yeah. Did usually. they inspire you in some way? Or? In many ways. Yeah, yeah. like? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the inspiration from my mom is yeah. um, constant learning. Uh, she's an academic teacher and 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 she's running a, a lot of research projects as well in in architecture and uh, revitalization so I was inspired by her um, in her mm, I, I was observing her as a kid while she was constantly l learning new new things and and developing her her um, uh, understanding of the world in the same time. Um, she was actively teaching. She's still uh, a teacher, so she was conducting lectures and stuff for, for students and for, for other people. Uh, from the other hand, my dad. Yes. Uh, he's an engineer, architect, so I was observing how he's working. Um, how um, mm, I think he's one of these, these pers uh, persons who is able to deliver things on time. And it's very unusual in IT. <laughs> while my dad, he was always on time. He, he, you have he, any idea how or why or what mm, he did? He was always focused on the most important things first. Mm. So it's the, the very um, important stuff when my dad is telling that he will do something. I'm 100% sure that he will do it. It will happen. It, it will in happen. time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> on time. So it's, 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 he, he's like this and also um, his interest in um, uh, Far East philosophy mm. uh, really mm, uh, influenced my thinking. So um, we uh, at home we had a lot of discussions about art and architecture and s uh, stuff around uh, architecture. But in the same time, this um, Far East philosophy and Buddhism Zen and, and so on, yeah. it was kind of the... Um, the background for my uh, personal development as a kid. Did you know that I spent a huge chunk of my life, you know, studying I the same? I heard yeah. about <laughs> it, but I don't know the full story. No, no, no nobody knows the full story. <laughs> yeah. But I've been deep. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very good. Yeah, so you had this, uh, you know, architecture, engineering, uh, doing, getting things done on time, mm -hmm. yeah. combined with. Uh, also philosophy and and spiritual thinking uh, holistic thinking yeah interesting uh, now uh, what el what did you like to do when you were a kid hmm I was reading a lot reading yeah, yeah. yeah. so it was one of these uh, things that I was um, maybe a little bit different than other kids. Yeah. Uh, when we were kids with my sister, uh, my parents told us that telly, the TV set, is yeah. broken. Yeah. And they hid it. Yeah. And they took it away and said, it's broken, we can't fix it. 
and we say we were kids so we say oh come on maybe there's a way to fix it no there's no way so we accepted this fact okay so probably there is no way because parents said so so we <laughs> they told us so here are books you, yeah. you should read books more yeah. and, and and i was reading a lot of books because i didn't know that uh, to be frank Telly wasn't broken. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I started reading books, and and I, it's one of the biggest, um, um, the best habits that I have developed as a kid to read a lot and to be passionate about reading and and learning new things. So that was one of the things that I was doing as a kid. I was playing chess. Chess. Also. So it's uh, another. Another thing, I haven't. I'm been actually, I'm playing. Do you play still play chess? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I'm guessing you're pretty good. We can try. It Probably. I, so I'm playing this uh, online, you know, on the iPhone chess yeah. with a, another work colleague actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the beginning, he I beat him mm -hmm. fairly quickly, and I was like, oh, all right. But for the last, I don't know, five, mm -hmm. ten games, mm -hmm. he's beaten me. Easy. So I need a little help. We're okay, in the we middle. Can. So in, after this interview, yeah. we'll, you'll take a look and help me do the, okay. the next yeah. move. Let's, let's, and then, and then, mm -hmm. and then from now on, we'll start playing. Mm, we'll play. Okay. You and I. Okay. Deal. Deal. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, so I was playing <laughs> chess. I was playing guitar and piano. Yeah. It was the, the music. Uh, yeah. And uh, I haven't been playing uh, computer games too much. No. I was pas maybe not passionate about it. I was interested in it uh, because uh, my, my, my other friends were playing games like like crazy, but my computer was too slow yeah. <laughs> for the cool stuff that w was on the market at that time. So I was more watching how they are playing when we are meeting after school, right. and mm, it's. Um, mm, I noticed years later that I have. Mm, uh, develop the uh, op mm, develop the this learning skill that I can learn stuff by observing people doing things. So I don't really need to experience things by my own. Uh, sometimes it's uh, for me it's more important to observe others who are doing stuff, and I can somehow um, acquire this knowledge. And maybe this um, this way of um, having fun as a kid, when I was n maybe not the player uh, of the computer game, but the, one of the guys who were sitting around and watching what is uh, going on yeah. on the screen, um, helped me to develop this uh, this ability to learn new things just by watching and and um, mm, uh, acquiring um, things from other people's experience, so so that this kind of ability, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, or maybe it's my kind of r r r r rationalization. <laughs> right, and it seems like you have a strength there. We all have strength and, mm -hmm. and weaknesses, yeah. and you're strong at just observing and mm -hmm. learning from that. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Now, uh, uh, you. You uh, when did you, s you do you program? I did. I, did? I, yeah. I have um, I have graduated computer science. Yeah. In so in that Poland. was my next. So so you, mm -hmm. so when you went to university, that's when you mm -hmm. made a big choice of which direction to go, yeah. and and you s you s chose to study computer science. Yeah. Is it? Uh, it's a little bit more complex um, because I, I've chosen to study. Um, Jazz. <laughs> what chess? Jazz. 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 And I've, uh, I, uh, uh, when I was in the high school, I thought I would become a m musician. Yeah. So it was what I really wanted to do at that time. Yeah. Also, I was thinking about kind of weird um, uh, studies like um, uh, quantum physics or or. Uh, 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 physics in, 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 in general because I, I was interested in physics and maths but uh, from the other hand I wanted to be a musician right. and I thought it would be it would be cool if I would have a really cool um, 
um, uh, name of the faculty that I'm uh, <laughs> that I, I, I'm uh, that I'm going to because it will be uh, a benefit when I will try to pick up a girl. <laughs> so that was for that's all. why we all chose cho uh, the direction. Yeah, we chose, yeah so right? so it was uh, uh, when I was 17, but. I had um, an injury. Uh, I broke my fingers when yeah. I was at the last um, class uh, at, uh, at the high school, and I couldn't play guitar for months. So I decided, okay, so I'll do math and physics um, exams, and That's I will funny. apply to to some um, computer science universities. And yeah. I, I, I. I uh, I passed exams uh, well enough to, to start uh, the university and for the first two years it wasn't the best, um, I, I haven't felt that it's something for, for me because uh, we mostly uh, were uh, teached, taught, 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 taught yeah. uh, how to um, deal with electronics and there were no programming and I was quite curious about programming and doing stuff but we had a lot of um, logics and, and and logic gates and all this stuff and microprocessors so for the first almost three, first three years of the university we were very hardware um, oriented um, guys and during this time I realized that I'm really passionate about um, uh, mm, software requirements because I, I mm, started to to read more and learn more about quality assurance about uh, UML and all this um, modeling uh, techniques mm -hmm. and and uh, writing specifications and thinking about how things should work it was some somehow interesting for me and in the company that I used to work at the time uh, I started as a software tester and I, I, I started writing some automated tests yeah but then I was moved to the project um, where usability was an issue so I dived into usability field and I found myself there um, very quickly and I started uh, going deeper and deeper and deeper and I realized that it's uh, really uh, inter interesting field to explore all the user experience service design stuff but there is a lot of psychology philosophy um, ethics a, a lot of uh, interesting things that you can um, you can explore when you are designing things so that's right. why I have decided to spend next years in it until today so I'm, I'm uh, my background is in IT yeah However, I am able to really develop my um, thinking in user experience and, and design. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Cool, that's a that's, uh, really interesting path there. Um, now, at some point, uh, you, you, you run into uh, competitive engineering, value mm -hmm. first, Tom Gill, yeah. met me even. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how... how uh, how did it how did you meet yeah um, it's a it's a funny uh, funny story because I have started um, I, I went to the conference in Czech Czech, uh, Czech uh, Republic yeah. in 2016 yeah uh, where Tom was a keynote speaker I was speaking at this conference I was uh, talking about um, uh, how to establish a co good cooperation between product owner and user experience designer in in the team? Yeah. So I was talking about some um, common sense of work and and so on. But Tom was a keynote speaker there. Yeah. And I heard about Tom from Lukas Schuster, mm -hmm. and I have um, tweeted uh, the picture with Tom, and Lukas commented on it. I'll oh, say hello to Tom from me. Yeah. So after uh, Tom's. You know, I went to, to Tom. I said hello from Lukas. He said yeah. thank you, and that was our first conversation. And the the next day, um, I was eating lunch with my friends at the conference, and Tom uh, approached us and s s uh, sat together with us, yeah. and we have started talking. And I, I told him that I'm 
doing usability checks and design. And he said, oh, I quantified usability. And we started this discussion about, about uh, uh, is it even, um, Mm, is it possible to quantify usability if usability is so subjective? Right. And uh, that's what I asked Tom. And Tom said, it is subjective, but what's wrong in quantifying things that are subjective? And I said, hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe there is something in, in, in it. And he sent me his presentation about quantification of usability. Yeah. And I spent a, around two months trying to find um, um, a weak point in his reasoning. Uh, I was trying to prove so that he's wrong yeah. and I really couldn't because I understood that in his um, philosophy in yeah. his um, way of seeing world yeah. uh, it works <laughs> right. so it's the model that he's using to the model behind the quantification of usability um, really corresponds in his thinking right. so if I will understood the principles that he uses to build his model, this quantification of usability will become possible also for, for, for me and for my purposes. So that's how I met Tom. And also um, during his keynote he said that he is um, organizing Guildfest. Right. And I thought it's a conference like many other conferences. So I asked, I asked him, so um, how can I join Guildfest? May yeah. I buy a ticket for it or it's already sold and he said no 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 it's an invitation only seminar for my friends 30 years of experience and couple of books you have to have it yeah. to, to, to join Guildfest yeah. I said oh, okay so thank you it's probably <laughs> not for me and he said no 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 you can be uh, you can be the Guildfest participant if you are the best in the world in something that is uh, really connected with the topic of the of, uh, of each event, and I said, "Okay, I have no 30 years of experience in anything. <laughs> I have, <laughs> I don't have 30 years because <laughs> I was 29 or yeah. <laughs> 28, something like that. So I, I I can't be the part of this guild fest, and I'm for sure I'm not the best in the world in anything." And he said, "But you've got one minute to prove that you can tell." anything interesting to my colleagues right. and I have described the idea of the um, card game that we have developed for children from educational care centers and for the teachers you have one minute yeah now <laughs> okay <laughs> explain it to the, okay. to the so guys to, uh, just to um, provide you more background um, the idea was um, the, the theme of the um, the conference that Tom was holding in 2016 was simplicity, right. and he asked me about um, uh, how we simplify. Uh, wh where's this simpl simpl simplification idea? And and I told him that the um, the insight from our research that we were um, that we ran um, in in educational care centers is that um, kids are very interested in technology and, and computers and stuff while um, teachers are afraid of technology so um, we can't uh, teach children how to responsibly and, and consciously use technology if we've got teachers who are afraid of technology so our simplification method is not to provide new tools um, to the teachers to run classes, but to um, make this gap smaller. So we want to uh, make teachers more um, encouraged to use technology in the classroom. So we have designed kind of participation game, but in, in fact it's a framework for teachers how to um, use technology during the classes yeah. to help children develop their social competencies. So, so the the, mm, the game or mm, this framework allow teachers and kids to pick up um, social skill um, card with um, technological um, mm, with that mm, 
technology card yeah. and approach card and uh, approach, approach card. Uh, for example uh, kids will um, work in pairs or in threes or as a whole group or as in individuals okay and the mission card and the mission card is um, uh, the problem that they are going to solve so we've got four cards and they're randomly picking um, um, one card from each deck and uh, we've got four decks not four cards and they, they're randomly picking the card from each deck and they are they pick um, video as a general concept of, of technological um, right. tools that can be in, um, then teachers and, 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 and kids will decide to use yeah. so based on the, the teachers experience um, they can pick something more sophisticated or um, uh, iPhone camera yeah. and it's a video tool right. um, they pick um, uh, the card with how to build a parachute it's yeah. a mission that they will accomplish during the classes they pick the card that they will work um, in uh, teams of two yeah. And they uh, pick the card uh, with the social competence. For example, they have to appreciate their own work and the work of others. So, so nice. kids and teachers are then discussing. So how we will approach the the, the class? Mm -hmm. What we will do? And um, they, for example, can um, came up with, uh, come up with, with the idea that they will use um, um, iPhone camera yeah. to record. How they have been, uh, the, how they uh, they built the par parachutes yeah. um, using paper and scissors and, and so on, and uh, they will work in in pairs of uh, in pairs, and they, they during the class the, the main focus of the teacher is to en ensure and help uh, people to be more courageous in appreciating their own work. So that's the mm, real goal. And the other goal in this um, whole approach is to show kids that the real purpose in technology is not technology itself, but the um, abilities that we can and opportunities that we create with using it. Right. So we, the technology is a tool, right. not the master. So that's the and and this is where. Again and again, when I go in and, mm -hmm. and work with projects, consulting yes. projects. They got that wrong. They didn't go to your class as a kid, yeah. right? So, so you know, before they mm. know it, the technology becomes mm. the goal, yeah. not the outcome, yeah. not the improvements, yeah. not the benefits. Yeah. And and with that kind of focus, mm -hmm. and no wonder why people mm -hmm. are struggling. Yeah, I, I think it took took more than one minute. That's okay. Yeah, but uh, it's I, I did it really, really quick yeah. uh, because Tom is. But that, so that's all. That's all, Tom. So you're yeah. welcome here. Yeah, to, uh, so in fast. ten words, and he started counting. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> at the end he said, "Okay, it's interesting. Yeah. So I will give you one month to send me an abstract. Right. But uh, now I think that he already decided to <laughs> to invite me, but he gave me another task to make me." Um, uh, mm, stretch yourself. Yeah, to stre stretch myself. So I came for the first Guild Fest in 2016, and now today is the third time I'm, I'm here. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. Um, okay. Uh, now, uh, so, so now you're fairly new, but you have had now a few years, but I think you also. Uh, really gone into it. Mm -hmm. uh, the methods, the yes. value first, competitive engineering yeah. methods. Um, now, uh, do you have any experience uh, you could share with in, us? In, uh, value in, use, in using, in quantifying using. values mm -hmm. yeah. and or value decision tables mm -hmm. or delivering value in cycles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 will, I will start from, from the um, opposite side. Yeah. Um, because um, before I started, um, the before I even realized mm, such a concept exists, um, I had uh, mm, quite a few years of experience in Agile yeah. and, and Scrum and, and stuff like this. So, yes. so I, I um, it really um, um, the idea of, of uh, what you are doing uh, and Tom um, completely uh, repurposed the uh, my and, and reframed 
my um, understanding on Agile and, and Scrum and all the other um, approaches and, and, and methods in software development. So um, to be frank, I have started understanding um, what Agile and Lean means when I've met Tom, not right. before when I met other very good um, consultants who were teaching the method and showing that the method is kind of um, obligation. If you want to achieve something, you have to go agile or you have to do Scrum and you have to be a product owner and you have to follow some rules from, from the, the Scrum guide. But there wasn't um, this clear idea why are you doing it. And uh, when I have uh, met Tom and I have started um, learning those concepts, I, I, I have uh, mm, realized um, uh, that <laughs> most of the work that I was um, the, the way I was working and the way my friends and most of the companies I believe work is um, is not um, the most effective way, just to <laughs> put it like that. Yeah, yeah. let's put, put, put it like this because um, they think about agile as a purpose, right, and not a tool to achieve the goals. And the problem with uh, uh, it is that there are no clear goals, and and that's the that's the that's the uh, that's the problem that. Uh, I have realized that uh, I had for, for, for many years. Agile is not a, a master no. here. I see that all, all the time, you know, like people are discussing, mm -hmm. oh, that's your company's more agile than mine, mm -hmm. and, or, yeah. uh, you know, you're not agile, or I'm agile, yeah. or whatever. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, but that's just the tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the purpose? Yes. yes. What to do. All right. Uh, yeah, and, and then, but then, great. Mm -hmm. I, I love I love hearing that. Mm -hmm. Now, but have you used, have you quantified any mm -hmm. values yes, on yes, any yes. project? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, something yeah, like this. Yeah. In recent projects, when I have, um, uh, when I grabbed the ideas, yeah. I have yeah. s started using them in my own um, projects, the, the project that I run, and yeah. also with projects, uh, in projects w w which I'm doing for my clients. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, uh, I haven't done the full evolutionary uh, process yet, right. uh, but I'm, I have grabbed some 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 parts of ideas and and I implement them in my own uh, work um, in design uh, when we design um, products and and services. Uh, the idea of decomposition is one of the uh, main ideas that I use. Um, scales and language. Um, uh, quantification is another way, uh, uh, the another tool that I picked from 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 the toolkit. Yeah. Um, when I run workshops uh, or when I teach at the university, I also um, uh, introduce language and uh, and idea of quantification, for example, to express what this ISO a standard yeah. usability really means because right. it's uh, also ambiguous you're still on you're still an expert work in the field of usability that's uh, one of your areas. yeah it's one of my areas still yeah. so I, I went more into systems engineering but at my um, I, I still specialize in usability as well I, I think that um, usability user experience is and, and all things that um, are important in terms of human product interaction is is is, uh, is very important and it's, uh, it's important for me. So that's why I'm still doing this stuff. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so you have your own company, right? Uh, yes, I'm running the consultancy. It's um, uh, for. Eight years I was uh, working as a usability guy and and uh, team leader yep. in big software house from Poland, and for more than two years now I'm I'm running my own consultancy. Uh, for more than six months now I, uh, I I'm not working 
only by my own, but I also have a co-worker who I'm yeah. working with. He is a visual designer. And we've got a very um, strong network of uh, researchers and designers who we um, invite to projects that we run. So, so the model is um, mm, from, um, let's call it, um, company perspective there I've got one more co-worker who is working with me but from the project perspective that we are running for our clients we are able to very quickly um, uh, collect the team of highly um, uh, skilled, skilled um, professionals yeah. who can conduct much more complex problems. So if uh, you know, mm -hmm. pitch you a little bit. So you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're interested mm -hmm. in Powell's uh, services, uh, you know, I think it, it's doing fantastic work, and uh, uh, so I can highly recommend him. Now, Thanks. how do they contact you? Um, I've got website. Yeah. It's uh, nov.me, uh, n o w, dot m e. Okay. Yeah, and Nov it's my nickname, but yep. also the name of the company. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, how it started. I, I will put a link. Yeah, yeah. Behind. Please, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we are doing um, mostly mm, UI, UX, and service design. Okay. Now, um, a lot of us we we learn good things from mistakes. Mm -hmm. Have you? Do you have any? big mistake that you've done that you know like afterwards you're like whoa how, how did I end up here mm, yeah, and if you course. can share with us yeah uh, I think one of the mistakes um, but mm, <coughs> for years I was blaming myself for the failure of big um, IT project mm -hmm. uh, but um, if, like two years ago I realized that it wasn't my fault but I, I've got this uh, natural ability to take um, uh, too much responsibility but uh, we were mm, designing the software for um, project management yeah. and it sh we were expecting that it would be next Jira or TFS or, or something like it but uh, mm, the projects were very poorly specified it was a waterfall project and I was responsible from this UI perspective on specifying what um, user interface should be but I always uh, go deeper into requirements but I didn't have this um, enough knowledge to, to do it, do it uh, correctly but um, it wasn't my responsibility to be <laughs> to be frank and but I thought it's my respons responsibility so I for years I felt guilty of that this project uh, failed. But um, at the end, I think it didn't fail uh, so much because um, this project was a very good um, sandbox for extremely well developers who brought a lot of value to the company yeah. who was uh, developing this project. And um, I think as an experience and, and uh, Mm, and uh, yeah, learning from mistakes. I think it was the um, mistake. The investment was a mistake, but there were a lot of good lessons. I was gonna say, from your point of view, the project was a great success, maybe. But yeah, uh, it was. But, but for the investors, yes, they were probably yeah. crying. Yeah, of tears. course, uh, <laughs> of course, yeah. But for me, it was um, the very big chance to to develop and to go deeper yeah. and I this project it took a few years yeah. and I was right. quite much involved no, for two years in this project so as a very um, as a person who who, who doesn't um, really um, know um, how to do things and someone is paying you money and gives you two years to experiment it's a very good um, way to um, really develop your skills and, right. and, and competencies if you can reflect and think of So if you were to be mm -hmm. part of managing the project, I understand you were more mm -hmm. focused on the user, user, inter user interface, yes. usability, but uh, what, what was the learning, like what would you need to do better, uh, different mm. to actually succeed in, in mm -hmm. that project? Um, we what were, yeah, um, in this um, particular project, yeah. um, we were missing, uh, we, were, we weren't closing the feedback loop. 
to a fan. So we were focusing on researching needs. Yeah. We were designing stuff, we were implementing stuff, and then we were looking for new needs. And yeah. then, and but the releases were very, very rare. Right. So, so the problem was that uh, we haven't uh, been closing the feedback loop, and we, and it was another mistake. We had the system that worked, and it worked for ten years. And yeah. after ten years, someone said, "So let's build 2.0 version." Yeah. And instead of um, evolving the old system into new one, yeah, uh, we decided to start from scratch. Start from scratch, and yeah. after one year, um, the new system had an ability to display things from the old system in read-only mode, <laughs> without any um, uh, possibility to create or update or delete. Right. Uh, the stuff inside, so it was kind of preview mode with nicer colors to the system that worked, right. and it was uh, a waste of year. So we haven't brought maybe some value in aesthetics, but it doesn't uh, give any um, function that the old system was um, right. uh, providing. So it was it was a big big mistake. I see this again and again, you know, mm -hmm. that people want to start from scratch because it's so enticing to have, yeah. you know, everything fresh, you can do it mm -hmm. right. And uh, again and again, those projects mm -hmm. tend to fail. Yeah. They're not always, but they tend to fail. Uh, uh, so, yeah, like you're saying, highly recommend, even if you're going to end up with something that doesn't have a, a line of code from the mm -hmm. old, right? Completely new start from what you have yeah right so I'm not saying don't build completely new systems because technology mm. change you need yes. to be able to change out mm -hmm. but start from what you have yeah, right? good, good lesson all right now um, uh, do you you read uh, you, you love to read since you're a little child so uh, are there any books that have influenced <coughs> you that you, we can share, that maybe mm -hmm. could influence somebody else, that you can recommend mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, um, from I think for everyone who's interested in designing and building things, yeah. uh, I think the Designing for the Real World by Viktor Papanek is um, one of the most it's, it's excellent book and one of the most important books that I've ever read. So it's it's it's, it's amazing and very um, profound book. Uh, about um, responsibility in design, what class of problems should we solve, and should we um, be um, people who create new needs and work with aesthetics of products and and fulfilling kind of artificial um, goals, or should we solve real problems and um, solve them quickly in a cheap way? And in the sustainable way, so in the future those problems will not create the new ones. So, 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 it's a perfect book for a, a, anyone who who um, wants to um, who feel responsible and accountable not only for the money <laughs> of the company, but especially for for the humanity. So it's it's a wonderful book. So it's my first first recommendation. Um, Another book that I strongly recommend for people who want to become or are problem solvers is um, Gerald Swainberg's um, book uh, are, your, are, your, are Your Lights On? Are Your Lights On? Yeah, it's, it's an amazing um, and very uh, entertaining book about uh, problem solving. It's, it's, uh, I really, really recommend this one. Mm, I found uh, I have to remind uh, think about English English title of this book uh, mm, and the author mm, it's uh, I, I found it really really entertaining last year but it's a it's a scientific book and it's a popular science book uh, I think it's emotional life of the brain emotional life of, of the, the brain, brain. Mm, and the author, huh, 
I will maybe later I will give you the the, the full list yeah. so you can attach to this video. I will do that. Yeah, but it's it's an amazing book about uh, um, st uh, studies that um, Daniel Goleman and and with, with the author of the book was running uh, on how meditation uh, uh, helps to rewire brain and uh, and. Uh, Mm, and they were describing um, experiments, uh, mm, neuroscientific experiments that they were running um, with uh, uh, Buddhist monks. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's an amazing, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an amazing, amazing book. story, and the book is really, really, really great. Um, yeah, so there are the first three books that I I, uh, I was thinking of. That's good. Yeah, I, we can I, attach I will, later. Yeah, I will attach with with more. Thank you. Now, uh, um, uh, for people going in your direction, mm -hmm. uh, maybe usability, mm -hmm. maybe project management, software, mm -hmm. uh, what's one or two or three things you'd like to recommend, like uh, to study or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to do? Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, um, one or two or three things that I recommend <laughs> to do. Yeah, uh, like like so mm -hmm. so like, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. if you're in software, everyone will be bombarded with agile methods mm -hmm. sold to them by the Americans or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll get that, right? Mm -hmm. But what what is it that they really should be mm -hmm. you know, to become strong in the field? Okay, I think that um, maybe it will not be popular for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I will say in terms of design and 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 becoming a better um, designer, I think that uh, studying philosophy and and uh, learning from uh, that there's a lot of mm, great ideas in in, in uh, coined by philosophers that we can study yeah. that are very powerful when we design products. And, and I really recommend it. Also, when you study philosophy, you've got better perception on how to define things. Because philosophy is about discussing, but also defining things and, and, and concepts and ideas. And when you design products, you need to define the purpose of, of the product, uh, objectives and so on. So that's what you do with uh, with uh, Tom and uh, your your methods. Yeah. You are defining very precisely what the things should should should, uh, should do and how well yeah. uh, the, those things should be done. And and I uh, I think that in philosophy we will find a lot of very mm, profound insights into into design work. So that's the the one one thing. Yeah. The second thing is to be, um, and it's also um, the, mm, I believe the the thing that you develop when you are studying philosophy it's uh, uh, to be reflective, to think about things, to think about your approach, to always um, make this um, feedback loop. But uh, mm, the the feedback loop. Uh, about y your own thinking and and constant learning, I think it uh, it requires a lot of attention and and ref reflection on your on, on yourself. Back to your mother, yeah. the you know uh, constant learning. Yeah. you were mentioning with yeah. your mother. Yeah, and yes, yes. It's so it's, it's 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 a very important uh, important thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the third thing is um, the sense of humor. <laughs> you also need to be um, to have fun. And and uh, to be uh, not focused on like to be too serious, uh, but being um, I, I, the opposite of uh, being too serious is for me it's not being unserious or or, or doing stupid things. But right. it's not it's comedy. Yeah, either. yeah. For me, it's uh, um, having fun uh, with. Working with people, uh, being for the people, um, taking care of people, um, not only about project but of everything that is around. So I think that's that's a very very important part. Great. Yeah.
Thank you. That, Thank that, you very much. That, I'm not done ah. with you yet. I'm almost done. Okay. But, but mm -hmm. uh, what's your biggest passion? What's my biggest passion? Hmm. Yeah. Or what are you passionate about? Doesn't have mm -hmm. to be the biggest. But what are you passionate about? Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in the future. So I'm even if I'm quite a reflective person, thinking about um, the present and and the past. I'm very passionate about the future and uh, and things that we do today to make this future better or worse. Mm -hmm. So I'm very uh, passionate about speculating and thinking about the, the future. I'm passionate about um, my influence uh, and it's not kind of, um, just to be clear, it's not about how uh, influential <coughs> I will be and how important I want to become. I'm more um, Mm, trying to be self-aware that I probably can influence the future and probably I will influence the future in some degree and it's a huge responsibility on my mm, on my shoulders that I will change um, with my work I will change some people's life and uh, it's the, the f mm, kind of mm, driver or, or think that I'm, I think about uh, really is what will be this impact and how um, can I uh, increase the um, benefits for the humanity for, for people uh, uh, within the things that I'm doing right now and how can I decrease the number of bad things that will happen because of my work, because, for example, of, of technological development right now, yeah. uh, development of AI and yeah. stuff like this. So I'm quite aware of these things, and I want to um, mm -hmm. protect the um, possible better futures yes. and reduce the number of possible negative futures. So I don't believe that we are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that we still have some chances to survive yeah. and and uh, to have mm, a better world for next generations but it will require um, a lot of patience and a lot of uh, mm, self-reflection and self-awareness and mm, very tough decisions uh, that may not be um, best for myself and maybe I will end up poor, <laughs> but um, with this uh, feeling that I, mm, I've done things that I felt mm, they are right. So that's that's what I'm really passionate about um, to make things that will mm, make other people empowered and and uh, mm, uh, build um, opportunities for other to develop instead of increase performance and and doing everything super efficient and so on so that's 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 what I'm, I'm really taking care of and things so nice thank you. thank you very much thank you Kai like I said uh, in the beginning very happy to have Powell and now you know uh, a lot of experience uh, a brilliant young man and uh, looking forward to, to seeing and participating in that more beautiful future rather than the, the, the harder future. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.